We covered shadows on horizontal surfaces with parallel light, where the light source is 90 degrees to the left or right of where the viewer is looking. We did vertical lines, horizontal lines, angled lines, curved lines. But in a real simple way, we just, just lines there. If when you start casting shadows of three dimensional objects, then it gets, and, and all the situations that can happen with shadows of one object casting on another object, it all comes down to these basic principles. And then it's just like applying them to certain situations and it would be just be impossible to go through every situation that can happen out there in the world. So again, we're gonna keep with that and just talk about like basic principles and basic the basic rules of these things. And so we have the, uh, I set up a, a vertical, a horizontal, and an incline object that's going to cast a shadow on a vertical surface. So with this, with this vertical line, you know, the shadows of vertical lines on horizontal surfaces, they follow the ground line. And then, so with this light situation, the ground line is just going to be parallel with the horizon line. And when it hits this wall, it's going to do exactly what you think it's going to do. This part is pretty intuitive. This is a vertical line and this wall is vertical. They're parallel with each other. So when it hits this wall, it is going to go straight up the wall, just like you think it will. And then it's going to keep going up the wall until the light angle hits it and we'll put the light angle at a uh, 30 degrees to the ground plane and so the light angle is as always it tells you how long the shadow is and the ground line tells you the angle of the shadow so now we have um this guy this horizontal line that looks kind of small but it's just pretty foreshortened so it's floating up there into the sky and anything that is up there flo like floating in the sky, you have to drop a flagpole down. You're really turning this situation, you're turning it in, into this situation. So I just, from this, you have to know where this thing is. I'm just making this up. Like I'm just gonna say ground is, is right there. Let's just say, call that ground. And now I have a flagpole and I just need to do the shadow of this flagpole. Um, to back up a little bit, this, this line, or to go forward, I don't know, this line is parallel with this wall. So the shadow of this stick on this vertical surface is going to just be, it be exactly the same as the shadow of the stick on a horizontal s surface. This is parallel to the ground. This is also parallel to this wall. So the shadow of this on this wall is going to go to the same vanishing point as this stick does. So I drop a flagpole down to the floor and then I just run a ground line along the floor. It's going to hit the wall and then when it hits this wall it goes straight up the wall until the light angle hits it. And we'll keep consistent with this 30 degree light angle. And I don't really care about the flagpole because that doesn't really exist. What I care about is the very tip of the flagpole because the shadow of that is right there. So I know because they're parallel with each other that the shadow of this stick is going to go to the same vanishing point as the stick does. So I'm just gonna fake in a thickness so it actually kind of looks like a shadow of something. And I don't need to do another flagpole and a ground line. I could, but the easiest way to do it is just a light angle because all I need is an intersection. So from the other end of the stick, it's there, this one hits here, and there's the length of that, that shadow. Okay, so let's try something a little more challenging. 
here's an incline. So this is not parallel with this wall. I put the auxiliary vanishing point for this down here. It's right below the center of vision. So this is up in the air too, just floating. It's hard to tell. I mean, it could be touching the ground right there. You don't know, but I'm going to make it like up in the sky and I'll make it, I'll, again, I'm just going to make this up here. Let's say this is ground. Normally you would be the person who drew this thing. And so you hopefully know where it is in space because that is one of the critical things with shadows. You need to know where things are. If you just kind of willy nilly make things up and then wherever, and then you need to cast a shadow from them, you have to decide where they are in space. That's going to determine where the shadow is. So here's this flagpole. Um, I need to drop a flagpole down from the other side. See, since this is going to this auxiliary vanishing point that's directly aligned with the center of vision, this is where the flagpole will stop, right there. If this stick fell to the ground, it would land along this line. I have to go back and review the inclines um, videos for that. Okay, so this is really just, just like this one, except the problem is this is not, the shadow of this stick is not gonna go to any like easily found vanishing point. So what you do with this one is with anything that's not parallel with this, you find two endpoints and then you connect them. And now we have these flagpoles here. We can just go do the same thing. Flagpole, we put a ground line, oh no. We put a ground line and then a light angle and then, oh, this one, whoops, wrong color for light angle. It's right there. It doesn't hit the, it doesn't hit the wall at all. How about this one? Ground line hits the wall. Now this is the shadow of the flagpole and it's just going like straight up the wall, just like this one until it hits the light angle. And there, so now this is tricky because we have the shadow of the end of this on this wall, but the shadow of, of this end is on the floor. So then like, now what? So here's um, what you have to do often with shadows when you get something a little more challenging like this. We have it on two different surfaces. What you have to do often is remove walls. Sometimes you have to put walls there that don't exist to find the shadows and sometimes you have to get rid of walls. So if this wall didn't exist, then the shadow of this flagpole Hope this stays on the screen, let's see. The shadow of this flagpole would be, oh, it's a little bit off here, there. The shadow of this flagpole would be right there. This would be the shadow of the end of the stick right there. And then this is on the ground. And then this one's on the ground here. So if this wall wasn't there, the shadow would look like this. It would go all the way to here. So now I have the shadow of this incline on the floor. I have an endpoint, and now I have another endpoint here, and then I have an endpoint here. So this is just a straight line. So the shadow of this is just going to be a straight line. You connect these like that. Tricky. 
So I'll try to do some more things like this. I wanted to do a shadow of a horizontal line that is that is 90 degrees to this wall that's going to like have to wait. And um, we want to do shadow of curved surfaces on a vertical wall. I might be able to squeeze that in right now. Let's see. I might regret this, but if I put a little uh, uh, wall, let's put a wall right here. Right. And then these are all just flagpoles. So they're going along the floor. And then when they hit the wall, they are going to do exactly what you think they're going to do. They're going to go vertical until they hit the light angle. So here's this ground line for this flagpole it goes along the floor. It hits the wall and it's just like the first thing we did. It's, it is just like this one. You're just finding these points along this wall here. It goes along the floor, goes vertical. And I have these three points. And then I connect them. And here's the end point, And there's the end point where this curve hits the wall. And then it's going to look like that. And those are shadows on vertical surfaces.